Hi there. In the last video we got our authenticate endpoint working end to end so that it returns a JWT. The JWT includes a user ID and the endpoint has to receive the username in the params. However, we are not using the password in the authenticate endpoint and so it isn't fully secured. In this video, we're going to add the password to the authentication flow so that the user has to provide their username and password. To support passwords, we need to add a new password field to the user model. We've already covered how to add string fields to Rails models. However, we need to handle passwords a little bit differently. Passwords shouldn't be stored in plain text in a database because if a hacker were to obtain our database, let's say they uh, got access to our server and performed a database dump, they could see all of the usernames and associated passwords. Not only would they get access to our application, but some of those users may have used their passwords on other sites and so it's really our duty to protect uh, those passwords. To handle this Rails ships with a active record method called has secure password. Let's have a look at how we can implement that. Has secure password works by hashing the value and storing that in the database instead of storing the raw value and in order to hash the value Rails relies on another gem called bcrypt. If I open the gem file, you can see this is our gem file that was also generated by Rails. You can see here on line 16 and 17, it says use active model has secure password. And to do that, I just need to uncomment this uh, bcrypt uh, gem. If I do that and then run bundle, I'll have bcrypt installed. And very briefly, the purpose of a hashing algorithm is we get a secure value that can't be reversed. So if an attacker obtains the hashed value, there's no way for them to get back from the hashed value to the original password. However, our application is able to um, decode the hash and uh, evaluate the password. Next, we can add the field to the user model, which stores the hashed password. Now, when we're using has secure password, instead of using a password field, we need to create a field called uh, password digest. So I'm going to add a new migration, browse generate, Migration, add password digest to user and password digest should be a string. So this will generate our migration for us. You see we're adding a column password digest to users. And I'll go ahead and run the migrations in Rails DB migrate. Now that's done, I can add the has secure password method to my user model. So I'll open the user model and add has secure password. And what that will do is give me uh, the attribute accessors so that I can do things like user.password um, or user.authenticate. Now let's test that everything is working in the Rails console. First I'll see if we have any users to test with. Oops. Open the Rails console first. And we have this user, user ID one. So what I'm going to do is assign that to a variable and I'll say user.password equals blah. I can do user.password. So you can see, even though we don't have a password field, 
I can still call uh, user.password to check the password. And I also have the password digest where the password is actually being stored as a hashed value. Now that we've added a password field to users, we can start to add a password to the user flow. So I'm going to exit out of the console and let's have a look at our specs for authentication. In this first test, we call authenticate and we pass in a username and a password. However, the when we create the user up here uh, using factory bot, we specify a username, but we don't specify a password. So this test should be failing because the password doesn't match the username. Let's just run it now and see what state it's in. So we have a failing test because has secure password has added a validation for us by the looks of things. So password cannot be blank. And we can fix that by providing a password here. And it looks like this test is slightly out of date because instead of the token one, two, three, it should be returning this uh, JWT. So let's just replace that and run the specs again. There we go, this test is now passing. Next, I'm going to add a new spec which tests what happens when the password provided does not match the user's password. So I'll say it uh, returns error when password is incorrect and we'll make a uh, post just like this test here uh, but we'll provide a password which is uh, incorrect then I'll say expect response to have HTTP status and I'm going to, I wanted to return a 401 in this case, which is unauthorized. And there won't be a response body. I don't want to say something like password incorrect because that might give attackers extra information. So instead I'm just going to return the HTTP status code and no response body. So let's run this test now and see what happens. And we get undefined method ID for nil class. And that's because we haven't actually uh, called user, so the factory hasn't run, and therefore there's no user in the database. So we can fix that by just doing user.username. And there we go, so the test is failing but it's the failure we want because instead of getting a 401, we're getting a 201. And that's because we need to now write our logic to check the password in the controller. In order to check the password, we can use the authenticate method, which is provided by HasSecurePassword. So the idea is we will get the password that comes in from the params, compare it to the uh, user's password. So the first thing we do is look up the user based on the username and then we use the user's password to compare to the password from the params and if they're not the same then we will raise an unauthorized 401 error. So let's jump over to the controller and add some logic to make the comparison. So what I'll do is, after I've looked up the user, I can raise some kind of error, uh, unless user authenticate the params, uh, 
the password param that's being passed in by the user. And what I'll do here is specify a new exception. I'll call it um, authentication error. So now if I run that test again, now we get an uninitialized constant error because this uh, error, I've just made it up. Um, so it's not defined anywhere in our application. To do that, I can write a new class, authentication error, and I need to inherit from standard error. And I'll just make this a one line class that doesn't have any, any uh, contents. If I run the test again, so now there's no uh, uninitialized constant. Now we're actually raising uh, this error because the um, the user authenticate method has failed because it doesn't match the the password. And that makes sense because we're passing in uh, the password is incorrect and the password from factory bot is password one. Now we have code to raise a custom exception. We need to handle that exception. And uh, when it happens, we want to render the 401 uh, status code. So jump back to the controller. And you can see here we have the rescue from parameter missing. I want to do something similar here. So I'll say, oops, uh, rescue from authentication, authentication error with, and I'll just call it, I'll call this method handle unauthenticated. So now we'll define a new uh, custom uh, handler method, handle unauthenticated, and all I'll do is head um, unauthorized. Oops, unauthorized. So head unauthorized, uh, it works similar to render, except that we don't need to provide a body. So let's save that and rerun the test. And there we go, now it's green. We're getting the correct status code in the case that the user cannot be authenticated. And while I'm here, I'm just going to remove this print line that we don't need anymore. Make sure that everything still passes. And let's also run the whole test suite to see if any of the other tests need to be updated. There we go, everything is passing. And we have a test for the, the happy path when the password matches. And we have a test for the unhappy path where the user doesn't match. Sorry, the password doesn't match. The last thing I'm going to do is tidy up the controller slightly. And I can do that by creating a new method for the user instead of doing the inline assignment here. So I'll cut that out, paste it in here, and I'll change it to be a memoized value. So what it means is uh, when I call user here, it will find the user based on the params and assign it to the instance variable. And when I use it again here, it won't need to run this code again, it can just use the instance variable value. Let's run the tests again to make sure they still pass. And that looks good. Now that we have everything wired up, let's run a call request to check everything manually. So what I need to do is run the server. And then I can uh, perform a call request. I'm going to check whether I have one from before. There we go. So I'm going to run this call request. It's a post request to API v1 authenticate. Uh, it is a application JSON request. 
and in the body I'm passing a username of bookseller99 and a password, password1. So we should have this value in the database. Uh, sorry, we should have this uh, user in the database. However, I've just remembered that this won't actually work because the user in the database doesn't have a password because obviously we've only just added a secure password. So what I'll do is jump back over to the uh, server, kill that, and I'll run the Rails console. We have one user in the database. And I'm going to, uh, let's say, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to assign that to a, to a uh, variable, and then I'm going to set a password on it. Password one. Save that. Okay, so now we have a password digest set. So now hopefully if I run the server again, we should be able to run this curl request. And there we go. We have a response code here with a, a token field, and this looks like a, a valid JWT. Before finishing this video, it's worth saying that there are many ways to implement authentication in Rails. There are some popular frameworks such as Devise, which are more fully featured. They have um, features for uh, reset password, for doing um, emailing uh, confirmation links when people sign up, uh, all of that sort of thing. In this video though, I've just gone with has secure password, which is uh, lightweight and works quite well in this particular use case. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.